there, everybody, and welcome to our worship service for this week. This is the second Sunday of Easter, uh, so we're so glad that you found us, uh, found our worship service today. I especially want to welcome those of you who might be joining us for the first time, um, even those of you who have never been to St. Paul here in Wapakoneta. Uh, we know that because of how we're doing worship right now, our worship service is reaching people far beyond our own congregation here. And so we welcome you and hope that you can join us again. I want to remind folks about our Tuesday evening meals that we are offering. We're doing delivery service for our church members and we're doing drive-in pickup for those uh, in our community who need that assistance. So if you know of someone or if you could use those meals, please give us a call. You can reach us here at the church. It's 419-738-2215. And please use extension four and leave a message for me. Um, and then if you, uh, if you, need to have delivery arrangements made, uh, please let us know that as well and we can take care of you. We need your meal reservations by Friday each week by five o'clock. And again, that's for a Tuesday evening meal. The roofers have been busy working on things here at the church and they are nearing completion of their work as we make this recording for you today. So just a reminder that we only have a few weeks before we have to pay the balance on that account. So if there are those of you who were hoping to make donations to our building fund toward that effort, it would be helpful for you to make those donations now. Also, those of you who are concerned about keeping up with your regular offerings, just a reminder that you can send in those offerings by mail. It's P.O. Box 147, Wapakoneta, Ohio 45895. Or of course, you can find the Give button on our church website, which is www.stpaulucc. That's S-T-P-A-U-L-U-C-C. Com. The peace of Christ be with you. Sing a new song. 
Let us pray. Holy God, nothing is beyond your power to transform. In a gray dawn, you coax songs of Alleluia. From the tombs of despair, you call us to hope. You transform our doubt and skepticism into confessions of deep faith. We praise you for your amazing resurrection power. Come, risen Christ, and continue to speak peace and hope throughout this Easter season. Amen. Our hymn is This Joyful Easter Tide.
scripture lesson for today comes from the Gospel according to John. I'll be reading today from the 20th chapter of John, beginning with verse 19 and continuing through verse 29. Listen and hear the good news. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand and see his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is God's word given for us and for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Every year in the Revised Common Lectionary, this text comes up on the second Sunday of Easter. This is the story of Jesus' appearance to the disciples the resurrected Christ showing himself to them. Well, almost all of them were there. And of course, Thomas was missing for that uh, first appearance of Jesus to uh, those disciples who were gathered together. Thomas has, has gained the moniker of the Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Poor Thomas, I always feel so badly for him because he's, he's been given this bad rap through uh, so many centuries. It's been um, passed down, this, this name. Uh, he is given a name in scripture, a, a nickname. It says that he was called the twin. And I've often wondered whose twin was Thomas? Who is, who's, who is his twin? And I think perhaps, maybe, maybe we are. I think that a lot of us bear a striking resemblance to Thomas in his doubt of the risen Christ. In fact, when we look at scripture, when the women came from the tomb and announced to the disciples, we have seen the Lord, they didn't believe right away either. But none of them have gotten this, uh, this nickname of, of the doubter. 
Doubt is an interesting thing. You know, we sometimes think that doubt is the opposite of faith. That doubt is the opposite of faith. But I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think that if we were to really think of what the opposite of doubt might be, I think the opposite of doubt is absolute certainty. If we are absolutely certain of something, if we have absolute proof of something, we don't need to have faith anymore at all. At its heart, I don't believe that this story from Scripture is a story about doubt. I believe, and I'd like to maybe reframe for all of you this story in another way, I believe this story is one about Christ's provision for us. God giving us the things that we need in order to have faith, in order to trust in God. When Thomas hears from his friends, the other disciples, we have seen Jesus. He was here. Thomas says, I don't know how I can believe that. I'm going to need something more. Until I see him myself, I don't think I can believe. I need to see. I need to touch. I need to know. And what does Jesus do? Jesus gives Thomas exactly what he asked for. He gives him exactly what he needs in order to have faith. In order to have that faith restored, that trust in God. Friends, I don't think we need to be afraid of our doubt. God is not afraid of our doubt. God is not afraid of our questions. We are called in our lives to ask those questions, to be honest in front of God, trusting that God is going to give us the spiritual gifts that we need in order to have faith. So do not be afraid. We are in good company with our brother, our twin, Thomas. I would ask as we continue to go through this Easter season, this time of doubt and questioning and wondering where God is and how God is working, that we would bring those questions to God, bring them to Christ in prayer, and then listen. One thing that I think sometimes gets missed in this story is how Thomas was willing to be moved when Christ spoke to him. I know a lot of people who, it doesn't matter what kind of evidence is given to them, they will not change their minds. They will not be moved. God asks us to have open hearts. Bring your doubts, bring your questions, bring them expecting for God to be at work in them. Bring them expecting to be moved to greater faith. And I promise that God will work. God will work in your life and God will work through your life. Our scripture passage today and most translations of this text 
end with something like a question to Thomas from Jesus that says, Do you believe because you have seen? And then Jesus goes on to say, Blessed are those who believe without seeing. But when we look at that text in the original language, it's really not clear where the sentence division is supposed to be. And it could just as easily be translated, You have believed. Blessed are those who on account of you believe without seeing. Blessed are those who because of what you have experienced here, Jesus says to Thomas, blessed are those who believe because of what's happening right now in your life. God worked through Thomas. We have this story of faith, this profound story because of what happened that day. God worked through him, and God will work through you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we all have questions from time to time, and you know our hearts. You know our fears. You know our doubts. We thank you, God. We thank you for listening when we pray. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your unfailing love. We pray, God, that you would be working in us that you would help us to have our hearts open, that we might bring you our questions, that we might bring you our doubts. Help us to be movable, shapeable, so that when you speak, we might hear you and be encouraged, that we might be moved to greater faith, to deeper trust, and that through our faith, your light would shine to all those around us. We ask it in the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is Christ is Alive.
Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>